hi everyone welcome back to our channel i am trish and today i wanted to share the devotional for um august 26 and the devotional i choose is homeward bound but before we begin let's have a quick word of prayer father we want to thank you so much for taking us safely through last week and as we embark upon this brand new untried week we are asking your lord that you will Give us your strength. Give us knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, and help us to depend upon you. Help us to pull back the curtain of time and remember those days when we thought we would not have overcome certain situations and show us how you th showed up for us and brought us through. Thank you for all that you have done and all that you're going to do for us during this week. In Jesus' name, amen. And so, guys, I pray that everyone is doing all right. I hope everyone is hanging in there. I keep trying to look in this direction. Um, I'd like to share a hymnal with you guys. I'm not going to sing it. I'm going to read it because um, I can make a joyful noise unto the Lord, but um, I think it's, it's more um, pleasant for me to read it. All right, it reads, the title is In Times Like These. It's an oldie but a goodie. In times like these, you need a savior. In times like these, you need an anchor. Be very sure, be very sure your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. Remember that one? This rock is Jesus. Yes, he's the one. This rock is Jesus, the only one. Be very sure, be very sure, your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. Second verse, in times like these, you need the Bible. In times like these, oh, be not idle. Be very sure, be very sure, your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. This rock is Jesus. Yes, he's the one. This rock is Jesus, the only one. Be very sure your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. Third stanza and last. In times like these, I have a savior. In times like these, I have an anchor. I'm very sure, I'm very sure my anchor holds and grips the solid rock. This rock is Jesus. He is the only one. This rock is Jesus, the only one. I'm very sure, I'm very sure my anchor holds and grips the solid rock. Amen. And so the scripture reading for this morning, first of all, the title is Warnings to the Church. And the scripture reading comes to us from 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1, and it reads, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. I'm going to go down to the second verse because I think it also helps us to see and understand why things and persons are the way they are right now. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, blasphemers sorry disobedient to parents unthankful and unholy it seems as if i should even go down to three without natural affection truce breakers false accusers incontinent fierce despisers of those that are good and i'm gonna stop there because the the whole passage actually in your leisure you can read it and it will remind us and enlighten us as to why things are the way they are and why we should not hold um, or get offended or hold our fellow man in contempt because the Bible did warn about this time. And it's just the devil ramping up his, his game and wanting us to be against each other, pretty much, you know. And so... Um, I think this whole chapter will kind of refresh our memory, you know, as to why things are the way they are now. Now, let's see what the devotional has to say about this wonderful passage. 
It reads, Christ has foretold that deceivers will arise. Though whose influence iniquity should abound, sorry, through whose influence iniquity should abound, and the love of many should wax cold. And this is according to Matthew 24 and verse 12. He had warned the disciples that the truth would be in more danger from this evil than from the persecution of her enemies. Again and again, Paul warned the believers against these false teachers. This peril, above all others, they must guard against. For by receiving false teachers, they would open the door to errors by which the enemy would dim the spiritual perceptions and shake the confidence of those newly come to the faith of the gospel. Christ was the standard by which they were to test the doctrines presented. Very key point. All that was not in harmony with his teachings, they were to reject. Christ crucified for sin. Christ risen from the dead. Christ ascended on high. This was the science of salvation that they were to learn and teach. The warnings of the word of God regarding the perils surrounding the Christian church belong to us today. As in the days of the apostles, some tried by tradition and philosophy to destroy faith in the scriptures. So today, by the pleasing sentiments of higher criticism, evolution, spiritualism, theos theophacy, and pantheism, pantheism, the enemy of righteousness is seeking to lead souls into forbidden paths. To many, the Bible is as a lamp without oil because they have turned their minds into channels of speculative belief that bring misunderstanding and confusion. The work of higher criticism in dissecting, conjecturing, reconstructing is destroying faith in the Bible as a divine revelation. It is robbing God's word of power to control, uplift, and inspire human lives. By spiritualism, multitudes are taught to believe that desire is the highest law, that license is liberty, and that man is accountable only to himself. The followers of Christ will meet with the enticing words against which the apostle warned the Colossian believers. They will meet with spiritualistic interpretations of the scriptures, but they are not to accept them. Their voices are to be heard in clear affirmation of the eternal truths of the scriptures. And to me, here's the takeaway, guys. Keeping their eyes fixed on Christ, they are to move steadily forward in the path marked out, discarding all ideas that are not in harmony with his teachings. The truth of God is to be the subject for their contemplation and meditation. The truth of God is to be the subject of their contemplation and meditation. They are to regard the Bible as the voice of God speaking directly to them. Thus they will find the wisdom which is divine. Amen. And I'm so glad that this is a recording, guys, that um, if it impresses anyone you can always go back and listen to it over and over again but the lord is pretty much reminding us here about the things that will happen in the end times that there'll be false teachers but there's a path that the lord has set out for us and he has showed us his life here on earth and he is our perfect example and so with that guys i'm gonna run i don't want to go over 10 minutes but i pray that we'll all have a successful week in christ God bless. Bye.